Hi, this is Ken Jureski, and we're talking with Youngie Kim about her new project, Trailblazers of Light. It's a, it's a history, it's a website of uh, women photojournalists over the years. Hi, Youngie. She just left. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Sorry, I was late this morning. I had to sleep in. Oh, it's late. I know. It's 12.30. It's like 10.30 here, but I had to sleep in. Wow. We got a new mattress. It was so comfortable. Ooh. I couldn't get out of bed. Oh. Okay. So what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm talking back on this thing. <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, you do. You did, a, you did something pretty amazing this week, and uh, you've been working on it for over a year, pretty much, right? No, like like six months. Six months? I think like six months, four months, hard, hard, a lot every day. Um, I didn't think it would take this long, but it kind of led me into, um, kind of, you know, happened. Well, what is it exactly? What do you mean? Your Your website, what does it do exactly? So the Trailblazers of light is a site a list of um women photojournalists from the film era and there's like 500 photojournalists and there's about 246 picture editors as of now so it started out with um my frustration um i posted something on um facebook and People came together and started um, mentioning names of photojournal women photojournalists from the film era. So that's how the list was formed. It just all of it just kind of happened. There was no planning of it, um, and it was frustration of kind of the messaging that was I kept hearing not just one source but um, several sources for last I would say three years. Um, to me, it was like an alternate reality because it's not been my experience. As somebody who entered photojournalism in the 80s, um, work with the people who were from the 70s, work with people for, who came in the 90s, and then, um, you know, transitioned to freelance from newspapers. So it wasn't um, my it was, I have a very different view. So um, I think I heard, well, I think you heard it too, several comments, pieces actually that said women didn't have a voice. That, that was something that always bothered me. And then there was one piece, there was another piece um, last summer where it said, well, 50, you know, 60s and 70s women didn't speak up because they were just happy to have a job. So I thought that was sexist and ageist, and that's not always the case. So um, I saw a quote in the National Geographic piece that led me to this project, which was, oh, finally we're, I don't remember the exact quote, but finally we're, um, you know, women are, finally we're not seeing through men's eyes or something like that. and. So to me, that was, that was the last, um, you know, wasn't, it wasn't correct. So I voiced my frustration on Facebook and then people came together and list, started listing, listing the names. And so I kind of knew like last three years, I figured there was about 500 women in American photojournalism so my my guess was right because people came people gave me a lot of people gave me names listed the names and whatever so um and then i had this list of names and i was like well what am i going to do with this list of names i was like well i'll put it on a website somewhere so then deb peng davis said well i can do a website for you which is i think last summer early summer um, let's put it on a website and I'll work on it. So I thought it was just like, I could just do this and put it on a website and it'd be done in like a month. Um, but, 
as I was putting together names and I was getting more names, I started to realize I have to separate these names by decades. Um, so I started um, sourcing uh, the years that they entered photojournalism, the year. And so that was a lot of work. And then that led me to like doing a timeline. I think that was actually Deb's idea. Let's do a timeline. So that was a lot of work, sourcing um, early women who were hired at these newspapers. And then the other component to all of this is a lot of the women were very emotional. I got a lot of emails from women from the film era, which initially I called it the silent generation because we were silent generation because we were, you know, it wasn't about us. We were not marketers and um, we weren't the story. The subjects were the story. So it's a different era. And so a lot of people came forward and um, I got these long emotional emails from people um, that what it meant. Um, you know, when the first piece, the gaslighting piece uh, on Medium published, so then it was like, I sensed the sense of responsibility. And then I started to look into um, more, you know, it wasn't something that you're gonna just slap it onto a website. You had to do some more work. So I started to do that. And so it took longer than I expected. So um, finally it was launched this week. Um, but it was a lot of uh, tedious sourcing, asking, a lot of emails. Um, no, it turned it turned into a huge job for you. Um, I mean, I know it. I took a lot of your time, but the results are amazing. And like you said, you have this this tremendous feedback from all across the country from from photojournalists who might be retired for thirty or forty years now, and they've never uh, nobody. Nobody's ever recognized them or even uh, remember what they contributed. Right. And the amazing thing was, is how many women, how the large list of 1970s were, the pattern that formed. And I'm glad that I put it into the decades sourcing when they entered photojournalism, because you got a landscape of how many women entered photojournalism. And I was surprised how large the 1970s was. There was a big jump from 1960 to 1970s. And I think that's when uh, women, you know, that was the period of equal rights, uh, women's equal rights amendment, is it? And, you know, they went to work in newspapers, they were getting hired. And um, so I was surprised about that because when you traditionally listen to women from the 1970s, there's a really handful of women that people refer to, you know, Mary Ellen Mark. Um, so I was surprised how many there were. There was quite a bit. And there were women that I didn't know that, um, that um, you know, they did quite a substantive work for news magazines. Um, they were first staff hired at US News and World Report. And a lot of them, they didn't think they were first women hired. They just didn't think about it. Cause you would ask them like, were you the first person hired? And they're like, well, I don't know, but I don't remember seeing other women in the department. So they knew, but they were uncomfortable claiming that they were the first women hired because they were not of the generation that would brag something like that. So, so you had to kind of like poke and get information out. So, um, so that took a lot of time. Um, and then so even you're saying even today, they were a little bit reluctant to, to, to blow their own horn. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a different generation. You know, it was about the work. It wasn't, the story wasn't about us. I think that the, the whole thing of like story being about us, changed probably like early 2000 
what do you, I mean, you think you just blame that on social media or the fact that people could act? I think it's act- part of social media, internet, technology, era of, um, era of um, marketing is part of who you are, the branding, a lot of branding talk that you hear in photojournalism. I think it's, it's in, encompasses a lot of things, yeah. What, uh, I mean, what's, what would you consider, I mean, what's the opposite of branding besides just doing the work? You just, you, you, you gained your reputation over time by producing. Well, it's reporting, it's you're reporting, your visual reporting. Right. You, but you're, you know but what is? I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying your brand when it was more of a merit-based uh, profession your brand was, oh, that's young Gi. She She's never let me down, or she goes the extra mile, or when there's not a picture there, she finds a picture. Those are kind of the branding uh, phrases that I remember from the 80s, say, for example. This photographer um, will, 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 always, will, will always produce, or this one is never, you know, Right. So it was, it was, it was, you look at a photo and you say, well, how did this photographer get this image? Amazing. And you know, the situations that are involved getting an image because you know it from experiences. So it was different set of questions. You would ask, well, how did this photographer get this image? It's a great image. Or it was being on the front page published. Um, your colleague saying, oh, good job. That's a nice image. Um, and then maybe like end of the year, you enter a contest and you win a contest. And that was the way you shared it with nationally was through contests like POI and World Press Photo. Um, that's how you got notoriety, but it wasn't as instant. That was like end of the year. End of the year is when you saw how other people in other parts of the country photograph something because they would place in um, a contest. So that's how you shared it. I mean, this was all through the, the National Press Photographers Association was kind of a, there were two, there were, there were the year end contests and there, there, were, there were the year end reviews that would actually be printed in magazines. And that would right. be the first time that you'd see what somebody and say, if you're, you were in Boston, you might not see the work of too many LA newspaper photographers throughout the whole year until the contest. Right, right. It was, it was right, the, and that's how, that's how you saw it sometimes nationally. Um, but within your own area, you know, you, there was, you had your colleagues or whatever ecosystem um, or within photo departments. And there was a farming system. So um, now it's like that's all blown open. And so it's social media trying to get attention and getting noticed. It wasn't about getting noticed. It was about delivering the content and having it displayed big in a publication. That's what it was about. That was the game, I think, not not getting noticed on social media. It's a different, it's a different. And the other thing is, is, you know, as you know, we had to learn how to market ourselves more, you know, learn to boast and all that because, um, and have digital, digital stories about us because it was all done in print and it's not online. So you had to re-navigate, make sure that there's um, your stories out there on on the internet and stuff. And, you know, that took a time too. So um, there was a big gap, yeah. So now you have like 500 photographers who, because they worked before the internet, they were forgotten. Like you just said, there was nothing online about them. Right. A lot of these people, you you know, you, you sometimes as you're looking through your site, you're like, oh, I remember that name or, Oh, they did this piece that was really amazing back. Then. But it's it, you, you can you can't see it. You can't find it. You can't do a, a Google search. It just doesn't exist. 
So it doesn't exist. So like when I was coming up, like I remember Pauline Lubin was big, Stormy Greener. So I went on Moral Press website and some of their early stuff is on there. I don't know that it shows up in Google search, but I went on it and I looked at it. And, um, you know, some of those stories are incredible images even today, because if you look at it in context of like early 80s, late 70s, it's um, it's images that tell a story of their local community. So, and I read the captions. Um, there were some really great captions in there. And so some of those photographers that I remember, I highlighted in the intro of the website um, because, um, you know, they're just not um, discussed. I mean, not it's not in the conversation. So, um, so that was also my mission. And also, I think the the list kind of democratizes all the people that um, were part of photojournalism, women photojournalists, like you know, who weren't marketers, but, but they did good work. And so, because um, when we think about women past women, we tend to talk about same group of women. So I think this kind of opens up the horizon that they were more. And so I try to link it um, to whatever I could find. Some of them, they don't have websites. So I just linked them to their LinkedIn pages or go to AP archive and find the picture that they took and um, link to that. A lot of the wire photographers who do who did amazing work they don't have a website it's all in the ap archive so and um, a lot of a lot of that those negatives they don't even have their their negatives they might have some tear sheets they might have a, a random print here right. and there but they don't really have a, a a proper archive right proper archive or nor is it digitized or nor is there are they accessed or if they went from job to job they don't have the archive with them but doesn't mean they didn't take good pictures Right. So, yeah, so there's a there's a gap of it. And so this site hopefully closes some of that gap because there were these there were women who went to work um, who were photojournalists. You know, who are the trailblazers, really? If you look at the numbers and you look at the trends and the I did a thing on recognitions, timeline on recognitions. And if you look at the recognitions, they won a lot of awards. And it was tough to win awards back then because there were a lot more newspapers. There were a lot of good work being produced nationally, internationally. Um, wires as well as the newspapers. It was a very competitive culture among all the large newspapers. So. Um, I put some of that recognition in just to highlight um, their accomplishments, not all of it, but some of the big awards um, that they did win. I mean, you know, like Carol Guzzi won four Pulitzers. Right. And there's, and then I went back as there were other women earlier and stuff. So, I just put that in a timeline, all the premier awards, not all the um, individual categories, um, but some of the big, big coveted, considered coveted awards, you know, like having a Neiman Fellowship was a huge coveted thing. It was very hard to get because a lot of journalists back then applied for it. It was, it was, you know, it, it was, I remember it was very difficult to get. So the people who got those back then, Neiman Fellowships. I I put that in. Um, some other stuff I couldn't get that data, so I couldn't put it in. You know, now it's different. There's more grants and more contests. But back then there were like, you know, three or four, or maybe four or five that was like very coveted. And so I put I put some of that in um, just to give it um they were the reputable journalism, journalism contest. You know, they celebrated the excellence of the year. It wasn't a, a business model, a per entry 
um, contest or dangling the exposure carrot that you see now. It was, um, it meant that you took, you really took the best picture then um, at the end of the year. So, so I put some of that in to give it some perspective. Um, no, you did, you did an amazing job. And what I've seen on social media, and I've even gotten some emails from people that are just blown away <laughs> by what you've accomplished here. And you kind of, you pretty much did it all on your own, just you and Deb. And so Deb I have to give Deb a lot of credit. So I did a lot of the research, but it, the research took longer than I thought. And so, um, so I finished it, a lot of it in the summer, but it took longer. It just took longer to put everything together. And then Deb, who's a accomplished, accomplished web designer, she has, you know, she's in um, grad school for interactive media. Um, you know, she's an ac accomplished web designer, done web websites for a lot of the well-known photographers. Um, she has her own business, but she decided to go to uh, grad school. So she had to go back to grad school. So I knew that I couldn't, she wasn't going to be available because, you know, it's school. So I just gave her, I, well, well, we didn't finish it. So I was like, well, we'll just do a Christmas break because, you know, you got to concentrate on your um, school. But also like the website is a lot like photographers approach to photography in that you have, to, it's a creative process. So you couldn't um, rush it. So, you know, let her think about how she wants to navigate the website. And so if you look at the list of names, um, the photojournalist names. Um, she said in an interview this week, she said she was inspired by Maya Lin's Vietnam War Memorial. Um, so if you look at it, it's kind of like a cyber wall of names. And then the color is beautiful and the text and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's important to point out that Deb built this from scratch. It's not a template. She, she no, went no. in and yeah, so I didn't know, like, she said she would help, but I didn't know, like, she was going to slap it onto a template or she was going to do the design. But then she, you know, I didn't, I was just happy to get her help. I didn't, I didn't pressure her. But it turns out she ended up doing a custom design. She built that custom up. So that's also why it took a long time. And also, you know, I should say she worked on a Christmas and New Year's week. She gave up her Christmas to work on it. And also during that week, she had an emergency appendectomy surgery. So she had to go into the hospital. And then when she got out of the hospital, she was working on this um, just like the next day. So, you know, that's what it took because we kind of had a sense that we had a sense of duty to get this done. And so that's, that's why. And then when it came together, we were very excited um, but then, like, there was all these names. Gosh, the names, the spelling of the names drove me nuts because some of the spellings, like Annie Griffith, there's an S at the end. I forgot to put the S's in. So then I had to comb through all of it and put S's in it. I mean, the name, the spelling of the names drove me nuts. Um, so it was a lot of tedious, um, and I'm not good at spelling, so... It was a lot of tedious, um, you know, final policing. And then like Sally Stapleton came in the last minute and she's like, this is wrong. She just really cleaned it up, some of it. I thought it was cleaned up, but then she cleaned it up even more. Um, so I'm thankful for everybody who helped, including Jeffrey Smith. You had an input in it. Um, Sally, Natalie, Janet read it and she said, this is spot, spot on. I wanted to make sure I was fair um of the era and so few people read it and so it, it was a it, it was a process yeah so it took a lot longer it was like it was more than just putting a name on a website sure because <laughs> it would because that's what i thought it was in the beginning and then it ended up being this whole you know you know the historical timeline sourcing early women in you know, you would have to ask one photographer, you know, who are some of the other women 
And some people couldn't even remember, you know, they're like, oh, I think I was the first woman hired. So then you ask who else was there? Oh, I think this and this person. Um, so you go through that and it's my, and so it doesn't have all the major newspapers, but whatever I could get, I just put them in a organized a timeline um, as best as I can. So, yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an invaluable resource and it should be in print. I know it's, I know going to print is a whole nother like level of insanity, you know, to actually license these images that nobody has even knows where they are anymore and to to get these his you know it's a, it's a goal but i just i just want to say you know as so far there's, as there's well here they let me stop you that there's spin-off projects to be had for sure especially also oral history from the like 60s and 70s but you know this was not a portfolio site that makes that clear because that was her vision when she did it. And she said, this isn't a portfolio shot. It's about the photographers. So that's why we chose to link it and not put the pictures in because that would be another can of worms, you know, in terms of um, logistics. So it's not, it's different in that it's, it's the wall of uh, names and then it's about some pictures to show that where we were, like, you know, you can always see photographers work by going to linking onto their websites, but physically all the different places that they want, they, that we all travel to. And I made sure like, I want a picture of you in the field when you were young, um, you know, to, to capture the youth that we were which is no different in every generation, but I try to do it. Sometimes I couldn't get the pictures. Um, so that was the mission behind it. But the site is not a resume site and it's not a portfolio site. Right. So I just want to say, you know, I, I know you're busy today and I just want to say this is, first of all, you know, you have this, this grant that many people know about now that you've been doing for probably four or five years. And yeah. so there's the Youngie grant out there, which you started and you fund and you do pretty much completely on your own. And then you have right. this project. And so, right. you know, um, you've been, you've been a, a, a legendary photojournalist and an inspiration to, you know, generations. Uh, I want to say that, but now you're, uh, you're, you're, you're making a mark and, you know, not, necessarily with a camera but almost like a a, a historian and and a, a mentor in in a way i just you know want to thank you for that and i know that uh that there's a whole uh a whole batch of photographers out there that that know exactly what you're contributing but you know as i said in your last interview that we did on this format you know it's no different from this is no different from going on an assignment, a big assignment. It's the same thing. It, like, you know, you figure it out. You, you see a need to do it and you figure it out. Um, it's, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is there's, there's a need to do it, but nobody forced you to do it. You saw the need and you did it. But you can't like the, Listen, you can't say my entire career I was seeing through men's eyes. That just is not fair. That that was what motivated me because that's not been my experience. I was there. Those who are saying weren't. So you can't say my work from Comfort Women was through men's eyes. No, that's through my eyes. So you can't have this thing go on. And then the other thing that was upsetting to me was some of the photo editors, male photo editors were pushing this. And I'm like, well, you were there too. So how can you say that you're like insult to all the women that were um, in the work, you know, we were work with you along those side. Like, how can you say that? So, um, so it was, um, it was to defend um, my generation of women, um, what they have done. And Seriously, the women from the 70s paved the way, including the 60s. You know, like remarkable women like Uli Welsh. I remember hearing stories about her. I never met her, but I remember hearing stories about her coming through Boston. She was legendary. She set the tone. 
you know, she was a tough cookie and you knew it from the stories you heard. Then came Janet Na. She was another tough cookie, you know, and there were the women that were in the departments before me. So you knew they set the bar and you knew that was the tone that you did. I mean, we were competitive with each other, but there was certain sense that there was nothing untouchable, like un, unhandleable, you know, in an assignment. And so that was the tone. So I don't, it's an alternate reality for me to hear that, um, that we were just, a, a pre, we were just happy to have a job. So we didn't speak up. That wasn't the case at all. As you know, I'm very outspoken. All the women of my generation are very outspoken. And so some of their, you know, it had to, anyway, that was, that was why um, I did this project too. Cause I, I saw a gap. I saw this gap for a while. I was like, there's, this isn't, this isn't my experience. So it just wasn't, it wasn't my experience. So that's why I did it. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfectly good. So you, you bring up comfort women and every, every photojournalist, they have this body of work that, you know, there's some, there's some assignments, you just show up, you make the picture, but there's others that uh, stick with you. And there's such a responsibility to protect and guide that work through the rest of your life. And so, you know, comfort women, you'll always be um, promoting and protecting and, and uh, letting people know about that work. It just, it's the responsibility you have to the subjects. Right. And but so what yeah. you're saying, you have that same responsibility uh, that you have sometimes to the subjects in your images. You have that same responsibility actually to yourself and the legacy of all these people that came along with you and before you. Right. And so it's a, you know, whether it's you're out in the field working or whether you're doing research for this project, it's the same mindset, which is you got to have perseverance and determination and you just kind of go with your gut, which is you say to yourself, I'm going to do this and do it. And if you pull it off, apparently I said this before, if you pull it off, people respect you more. So I didn't know where this was going to go. It was a crazy idea, but I just kind of kept doing it because I had a sense of duty to do it. I mean, there were times where I was miserable, as you know, and frustrating. And it was like being in an overseas assignment in a war zone. I mean, that's how stressed it was because you didn't know where this, you know, there was a uncertain uncertainty about it. You didn't know where this was going to end up. So... I'm very thankful that um, Deborah Peng put it together and put it on a website because, you know, sometimes you're collecting this data and you're like, what the hell am I doing? So, yeah, so it's, it's out there. Maybe the site needs to be tweaked once a year or whatever. Um, yeah, so who knows? I don't know where this is going, but it's been launched. That's all I can say. <laughs> Well, I just, you know, thanks again, Youngie, and I want you to know how appreciated you are across the whole, the whole spectrum of the, the photography world. All right, Ken, thanks for your kind words, buddy. Are we done now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll let you go. Talk to you soon. I got to get back to my new mattress. I got to get, take a nap now. <laughs> All right, bye. It's bye. snowing here in New York. <laughs>